two, one. So I'm Kelly from Tech for Thought. And uh, I was just wondering if you could introduce yourself and give us your claim to fame. Okay, so my name is Johannes. I'm part of Monochrome. And Monochrome is a tech art philosophy collective. And we are doing many crazy, interesting, perverted things for a long time now. And uh, many people might actually know our projects, but would not associate that with Monochrome because, you know, the internet, the anonymity, click like YouTube, who knows, okay? Is that purposeful that people don't associate it with you? I mean, that, that's just how it ends up because the way you consume media nowadays is not very linear. You just like get an email and then check this out, blah, 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 Facebook. So no, it's not intentionally like that we are uh, like, like people like might not associate certain projects with with our like group name but ah, whatever doesn't doesn't matter yeah and yeah we what do we do with like Marxist sock puppets or like uh, uh, crazy non-existing countries or artists or we do this conference about sex and technology teledudonics uh, fucking machines stuff like that many many things <laughs> <laughs> well uh, definitely a, seems like a really out there project um, but it seems you're also tied in with these ideas of art and philosophy, and you know that's also part of what we do. You know, looking at philosophy of technology and mm -hmm. how does philosophy fit into your whole project? Yeah. So the basic idea of Monochrome is to try to, for, uh, to, uh, to try to find the perfect uh, weapon of mass distribution. So to find the medium for a certain message. That means sometimes it's good to write like a two-page uh, essay. Uh, sometimes it's good to have like a one minute short film sometimes it's good to make a musical whatever we did a musical before about uh, banking software so it's just we have to find out what context and what medium actually fits a message pretty good and then we try to do that so for example uh, Ars Electronica uh, the festival for sex and technology uh, uh, is I mean the conference format is really perfect for that because usually you associate like say a sex pornography internet all that stuff as a very anonymous kind of thing but we wanted to bring people together and just like declare hey we all perverts we know what the internet is there for uh, let's talk about it. sex and technology okay and uh, we started with Iris Electronica in 2007 and the basic question was there is such a clear relationship between sex and technology and how sex stimulated technological innovation in the last couple of hundred years so we should like have a look not on a level of small talk because that's everywhere but we should invite historians philosophers uh, people from the tech world to talk about that and I mean the first things that were printed by Gutenberg on his printing press after the Bible were smut and I don't know like uh, the first uh, Polaroid camera was called the swinger and there would not be any broadband internet if there wouldn't be this like interest in watching porn at home so there is a long long connection and that will go on and i find that very interesting and that's that's one of my favorite projects we're doing right now i have to say <laughs> well um what what has been like the public response to that um do they like it do they think it's vulgar um i mean we're doing it in san francisco that's very good because san francisco is known for its like liberal past and presence and of course there is silicon valley and that's a good combination uh, still people like you know what's going on but in a certain way uh, that's the dilemma of all the stuff we're doing because we start projects talking about sex about sex and technology and of course we want to popularize the idea and we want people to talk about the whole thing and get uh, get more detailed information about the whole stuff at the same time as I'm always saying is uh, we're pretty much like working in the subculture and trying to de-subculturize the subculture which is actually bad so where is uh, like the gap between what is subculture and what is mainstream culture and yeah and in a certain way there is no subculture anymore because uh, that's the that's the good and, and bad thing of capitalism like combined it can assimilate and uh, like and eat everything so uh, I guess what we're doing is like experimenting with subversion mm -hmm. and experimenting with uh, interesting but maybe difficult topics mm -hmm. and at the same time like trying to make a statement 
but not devalidating it in a certain way. That's sometimes a little bit of like a, like a, it's, we have to be very careful sometimes. Yeah, so um, 